Hey, what's up, YouTube? By popular request, I'm gonna look at the stock of Intel. I made a video on Intel last fall, but that is quite a long time ago. At that time, I said it was a buy. The price has gone up, the financials have come out. We gotta reassess the situation, see whether it's still a buy. So let's get started. So here are some highlights from Intel's latest annual report. One thing to note is the sheer amount of money given back to shareholders throughout 2019 and 2020. When you look at it, it's close to about $20 billion a year given to shareholders in the form of dividends and share buybacks. That's quite impressive, guys, when you consider their valuation. It's about a $220 billion company, and they're giving back $20 billion a year. Makes for a nice ratio there. That being said, they're really slowing down the acquisitions. When you look at this chart over here, they're really not spending much on acquisitions. So that's both good and bad. You know, acquisitions can go very badly sometimes. Uh, you might say oftentimes. But the good thing about acquisitions is that they cost a lot now, but you may see some growth in the future. So when you don't see any acquisitions, it is something to consider. They may not have that growth going forward. Here is Intel's portfolio. And what I most know them for is, of course, computing, the computer chips. But they're really expanded beyond that. You see they have the Internet of Things. They're big into the cloud. They're into the 5G stuff, autonomous driving, and AI and analytics. Here's their revenue growth over the past five years. Nothing stellar, but pretty impressive overall. It's also interesting to note the portion that comes from their data-centric business as opposed to the PC-centric. You notice a little uptick there from about 45% all the way to 49% of revenues from data-centric stuff. But to me, Intel still got the bread and butter. They got those computer chips. And they have quite some customer concentration in this area. So you see HP accounts for 10% of their revenue. Lenovo is 12%. And Dell is 17%. So that's close to 40% of the revenue from just three customers. That's a risk you really got to consider. I don't know the likelihood of it happening. But suppose Dell switches to another, another supplier here, that could have big implications for Intel. So here is Intel stock over the past year. It's down about 6.3%. The stock exhibits a funny pattern. If you notice, it's very, very steep drops in price. Usually it happen around their earnings announcements. So they have a bit of a history of disappointing investors and then the price recovers thereafter. Company is currently being valued at about $220 billion. It's trading at a PE ratio of close to 12, which is very attractive. And they're yielding about 2.5%. All right, here's some balance sheet ratios for Intel. Leverage is pretty low with liabilities to assets below 50%. Liquidity is just fine. The current ratio of 1.9. Quick ratio above 1 as well. No, no liquidity problems here. Interest coverage ratio is laughable. They can easily cover their interest expense. So I give their balance sheet an A. So here's a DuPont analysis for Intel. First thing to note is their margins are very good, which is true of the industry in general. Net income margin here, averaging about 25% over the past five years. 
So for every dollar of sales, they keep about a quarter. Nice. The asset turnover is not very impressive and the equity multiplier is pretty low. Again, they have low leverage. So in the end, the ROE averages about 25% as well. That's pretty good in itself. And notice the return on invested capital here averages about 30.5%. Very impressive. Okay guys, Intel looks nice. Is it a good deal? Well, we're gonna have to look into it. So at this point in the video, I'm gonna do an intrinsic valuation analysis. I'll use the free cash flow to equity model. This model says the fair value of any stock should be equal to the present value of all the cash the stock would generate. So I'm going to walk you guys through a spreadsheet which covers all of my assumptions and then we'll see what it's worth given those assumptions. So I like to look at reinvestments when I estimate reinvestment rates. It's also important to understand about how a company invests their money. For Intel, yeah, they spend a heck of a lot on R&D every year. Most recently spending about $15 billion. Their net acquisitions in the past few years have not been substantial. And in blue, I got net and CapEx. And that is a little significant. Looks like around $5 billion a year. All right, guys, here is a spreadsheet which covers my base case for Intel. I'm plugging in analyst revenue growth forecast for the next three years. And so Intel is actually supposed to shrink revenues this year. Analysts are only expecting about $72.5 billion. The year after that, no growth, and then 4.9%. Every year after that, we don't have data, so I just plug in pretty modest growth going forward. What are the margins going to be? Because if I have the revenue growth, I know my revenues. To get from revenues to net income, I need to know what my margins are going to be. I say about 25.3% as it is the five-year average. So we'll go with that. If that is true, here's my net income. Now, the thing I have to do is subtract reinvestment needs. Intel does some CapEx. They do some acquisitions. And if they're going to be growing even slightly, we're going to have to reinvest some of our profits in those kind of things. So what I have here is a reinvestment rate of about 22.5%, giving me reinvestments of about $4 billion a year and growing from there. Fairly consistent with their reinvestment needs over the past decade. That gives us a stream of free cash flows. Let's see what the company is worth given these cash flows. All right, guys, so here's the situation for Intel. Again, after 10 years, we're going to plug in a terminal value. We're basically assuming Intel can grow their cash flows every year after the 10th year at some kind of perpetual rate. I've chosen 1%. Seems a little conservative but I think it might be fair given the competition in their industry. If this is all true, we have a fair value of, well, it depends on what kind of return you want. So I'm putting up values for required rates of return anywhere from 7 to 10%. If you only want a 7% return, Intel is very undervalued. If you're looking for an 8% return, Intel is close to being fairly valued right now. You can buy some, and if we're right, you're going to get an 8% return. If you're looking for a 10% return, Intel is overvalued. Here is insider trading activity for Intel. In the past three months, you got two buys and 11 sells. 
Let's look at the number of shares involved. And so even though you have more insiders selling, the number of shares bought is actually much greater. So insiders have confidence. They feel it's undervalued. That's a pretty good signal. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts on Intel. Great balance sheet, great operations, you know, very nice profitability. The only trouble is the competition. Analysts are not forecasting good numbers for Intel. So despite a great operating history, what we really care about is the future. And so because of these forecasts, uh, I plugged in some rather modest growth numbers for Intel. The results I got say that Intel is probably fairly valued. Now, the one extra piece of information we have is that insiders are buying the stock. That's usually a pretty positive signal and it's something to consider. I'm pretty torn. I think it's a close decision. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always like to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching.